Oh, I should read some video comments. Let's see what we got. Montreal is a dirty, filthy, disgusting place. The only ones think they're so great is they're uneducated people. Dumping raw sewage into the St. Lawrence and they don't fucking care. Corrupt politicians allowing this pollution to go on and on. So stay away from this shithole province and including Vancouver. Shame on you. Hi, Dad. No, just kidding. So now finally I have an excuse to talk about my 241st favorite Montreal event. Come one, come all, come one and all. 2x2 2050 Montreal! Expo 2015 took place on the shores of the Saint Laurent from November the 11th to November the 14th. Some upgrades to the sewer lines in Montreal were necessary for a four day period. Outflows for parts of the island were redirected uh, straight into the river. It became quite a sensation internationally and even um, fan of water Aaron Brockovich weighed in. That's why Denis Cordier, aware of the um, snowballing media fallout over the whole event, suited up and headed down the poop chute to give this hot take on construction progress. We don't see anything, that's why we have a light. Uh, there's, there's some smell. <laughs> I like how the only thing he could do uh, with that distance from a press is give the thumbs up as he's lowered into a sewer. It's like a crap Terminator, you know. <laughs> Oh, man. Danny Cordaire tweeted to 500 news outlets while crawling through pipes stained with antidepressants and fryer fat, the likes of which I cannot imagine. 500 news outlets. Even YouTubers. My Morgan Freeman is even worse than my French. Alright. Anyway. But I think the effort may have worked. Initially it was to be 8 million cubic meters of surge, but the project came in early and it ended up only being 4.9 million. However, the damage had been done, and there lingered in many people's mind this misconception that Denny was some sort of fucking preposterous Captain Planet supervillain, you know? Like just polluting because he enjoys polluting, you know? We looked at, is there a way to uh, make some detour so the, the, the wastewater can, can go through? But it would have cost one billion and five years to be made. And it's kind of bullshit because he did get the rim to go ahead, which is huge um, for the environment. But also, this whole thing wasn't that big a deal. Yeah. Uh. In uh, another episode of Paige shows up at StatsCan looking for things, spurred by this release of Surge, I think uh, StatCan decided to have its own release of data. This data dump on dumps has province to province information on how and if we handle water treatment. So I started crunching the numbers to figure out what reality is, because, um, meanwhile, back in Alberta... To point out the hypocrisy of Coderre blocking a state-of-the-art pipeline for oil when Montreal literally dumps billions of liters of untreated, raw, human sewage directly into the St. Lawrence River. I'm pretty sure I found a point of origin for these comments, which I have seen quite a few times before. Kind of the same messaging, you know, it's like, um the conservative version of when um, Black Lives Matter started off and you would hear uh, progressives saying, it's time to listen. You can kind of tell that it's impossible that all of these people had this immaculate conception of a thought out of thin air. You know, it's something that resonated. So this resonates with them. Basically, it's something along the lines of, don't tell us off for oil sands production while you take transfer payments from oil revenues and block pipelines, yet still shit in your own river. Quebec. So over the years, I have found people in Quebec kind of downplay this stuff, but I wanted to figure out how Quebec is on the whole river surge issue. You know, is it basically Canada's squeaky clean, yet one province gets away with murder on the water pollution front? Let's find out. So I figured I would go with a river crap per capita because it hardly seems fair that a province with a tiny population gets um, off the hook, even if it puts everything that it has into bodies of water and uh, average it out over a period of data that Stat can uh, have uh, information for. So here are the winners for the worst prize in history. In third place with 114 cubic meters of untreated wastewater, New Brunswick. In second place with 215 cubic meters, Nova Scotia. And in first place with 373 cubic meters per capita of untreated wastewater <laughs> dumped into nature, Newfoundland. So it turns out we aren't even on the list. Uh, we're here, 
uh, pretty much middle of a pack water polluters. But I will say that most of the provinces that pollute more do it into salt water, which is actually a lot uh, better than putting it into a river. Putting it into a fresh water body is not good. So how is it possible for Expo 2015 to have had such little impact? I mean, how much did we dump in the river again? Two billion liter dump. But why does that text say gallons? Two billion liter dump. Wait, one of those units is like four times larger than the other. Liter. <laughs> it's a funny thing about this piece is it wasn't the number she's saying or the number that's written. And there's like 600 comments and no one pointed it out. Now I can't even call Montreal a volcano about you fucking pedants giving me shit about it. So she think it's a very good thing that the audience that I have is ultra critical, you know, keeps me honest. Anyway, I decided, you know, to be commenter number 621 and go in there and point it out. And I gotta say, it is a, it is a rough crowd. We need a civil war between Canada versus Ottawa, Quebec. Not even being dramatic, our country needs to be taken back by force. I agree and I'm in. Enough is enough. I feel that most Canadians feel the same way. Tell me when and where. <laughs> Can you imagine telling your grandchildren about the toilet wars? Millions of lives. <laughs> flushed down the drain. Well, Billy, something had to be done to save those Quebec fish. What were they called again? The, the, the ones with the with the big gills? Long gills? Long gills. So it turns out that just shy of 10% of the untreated water that Quebec dumped that year uh, came from Expo, because we have a much bigger problem. Montreal has what's called a combined sewer system on 63% of our sewers. When you flush your toilet, the water goes off to be treated, right? But what happens when it rains? Well, that water goes to be treated as well. The system we have could treat everything if it was spread out evenly, with just, you know, a sprinkle of rain at all times. But that's not how weather works. <laughs> so when it rains... That's just fucking great, man! It's game over! What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? All of that water makes its way to the Pooper Scooper, which is located in North Montreal. Kind of a weird flex, but it actually has the largest wet weather capacity in the world, so... Uh, you know... However, its treatment level is pretty bad. It's basically just removing solids. That's why once the water gets treated, it uh, gets taken on a pipe over to the tip of the island, where I have to say Mother Earth kind of takes one for the team. So we're not alone. Old cities around the world generally have this problem. But newer cities do what makes total sense to a modern sensibility. I mean, it's just what you might think happens anyway. Um, there is a drain for household waste, and that goes to the treatment plant, which does a very very, very good treatment on it that kills bacteria and gets rid of all the solids and makes sure that you could almost drink the water again. And then there's another drain for stormwater and that heads straight into the river. So you're not processing and cleaning uh, runoff from the street uh, like it's literally. And this partly explains the judgment being leveled on us by the oil patch because Calgary is a new city and it has a separate system. However, Edmonton has the same problem of a combined system as Montreal, which is why it also has overflow events, and why it doesn't really make sense for any province in Canada to be proud on this one. It's not surprising though that this news outlet, which basically kind of wants us to all hate each other, they're really taking a page out of the um, toxic American uh, media culture playbook, um, like they call, uh, they call COVID uh, China virus. I have a new book for sale. It's called China virus. I've kind of always wondered like, well, what do you call SARS? China virus. Or oh, what about H1N1? China virus. Guys, you have to be more specific. China has too many viruses. Because the feds have introduced a law that effectively requires us to do more than just remove solids, a big upgrade is currently underway for an ozonation plant which will kill bacteria. And apparently become the biggest plant of that type in the world. So, you know, just another achievement. Just, not just nailing at Montreal with the achievements and surge treatment while still being really bad at it. It's, it's interesting. Anyway, when it comes to not doing the bare minimum, there are other parts of the island that already have separate systems, including Point Claire, Dorval, and Beaconsfield. However, obviously it's largely not the standard. We've built some retention capacity over the years, so there's more of a buffer during a heavy rain that fills up and then slowly empties once the rain finishes. But overall, I gotta say, the effort's pretty weak. So after digging into these issues, I kind of came to a bit of a realization. The figures from StatCan reveal that Quebec disposes of far more cubic meters of water in total than the rest of Canada. So we're averaging something like 1,300 cubic meters of water per capita each year, and Canada is more like 800. And of course we'll say, oh well, it's no problem. We're basically the Saudi Arabia of water, and that means we have lots and lots of cheap hydro. 
to pay to pump and treat it and everything. But think of it from the Albertan perspective, the thing that they have a lot of is oil. So both provinces are kind of judging each other for the exploitation of their respective plentiful resource. And it's pure coincidence that oil is worse for the environment. And to me, the way we use water tells me that if we were the ones who had the oil, I don't think we'd be doing any better at all. The truth is that until Quebec rises above our own exploiting of resources, we will always be in a glass house when we throw stones on environmental issues. It's always going to weaken our argument. With hydroelectricity, it probably is the most environmentally friendly baseload generation option out there. But the hypocrisy comes in when you ask, how many dams have we built rather than just insulating our homes better? You know, there's a number there. And we keep demanding that Hydro-Quebec keeps consumer prices amongst the lowest in the whole world. And the truth is those rates are long shower rates. They will lead to a lot of waste. And there are environmental consequences to this stuff. And when it comes to sewage, there is just no excuse for the foot dragging that Montreal has exhibited on this issue over the years. I mean, economically there is, but morally, no. We're getting away with what we can get away with. And that sort of attitude weakens us and gives an angle of attack to people. So if you want to beat these people, rather than arguing with them, it seems fairly obvious that we need to move ourselves from a position of doing the bare minimum to doing a pretty good job, you know? What about Black Death? China bacteria. <laughs> come one, come all, come one and all to expoo. <laughs>